All right, how are you getting on? I'm with someone today. I'm actually with someone, so stop flirting with me. No, Kevin McGarhan. My good pal Kevin McGarhan's on the podcast. And this is a totally unplanned, rambly chat with one of the funniest men in Ireland and a very good friend of mine. And Kevin is touring all over Ireland uh, from next week. He's performing in Whelan's uh, on the 7th of September, in Cavan on the 23rd of September, in Debarra's in Clonakilty, fabulous spot, the 30th of September, the Spirit Store in Dundalk on the 11th of November, Port Leash on the 25th of November, and Dolan's, mate, on the 26th of November. Tickets are available through his Instagram or Ticketmaster. I don't know. And it's a phenomenal pastor poster. The show's called Showing Off. He's a very funny guy. He's my friend. This is Kevin McGarren. Kevin, you got short hair now. What, you think you're better than me? I'm a fade boy. <laughs> okay. I want to be hip with the kids. I want to be able to roll up to uh, uh, the central bank. Yes. With my skateboard in my hand. And I'd be like, hey, guys. And I want to blend in <laughs> with the fam. Had you any had you any knowledge of the of the central bank scene uh, from someone outside of Dublin? So when I first came up to Dublin, I would get a bus from Cavan. And I'd head up and I'd go to like Forbidden Planet and HMV. Nice. And um, Three for 30 DVDs. Yeah, I bought so many fucking DVDs. Get Bronson four when times. I, when, I <laughs> when I looked at just the collection of DVDs I bought and how utterly useless they are now, <laughs> I just like kind of taught up how much money I got to save. But um, this, I is, a man, this is a man who has a 3D TV. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I was one of the eight people who bought a fucking 3D TV. Yeah. Don't regret it. You, to be fair, like how many people have you had over to watch 3D Jurassic Park to your house? See, I've only just bought six sets of headphones. Oh, or that's of, handy. Uh, of glasses, rather. So now I can only <laughs> start inviting them now. So if you're up for it. Yeah. It's amazing that uh, 3D Jurassic Park is amazing. So anyway, um, mm. went to Temple Bar. Used to go to Eager Beaver. Nice. Used to go to the shop opposite Eager Beaver. Buy a pair of parachute pants. And did you buy? <laughs> <laughs> I bought a pair it's of hammer. <laughs> I bought a pair of parachute tassel laden. You're joking me. Purple, tassel? Yeah, covered in tassels. I you didn't know, know you were a cyber dog. <laughs> <laughs> like a cyber goth. <laughs> um, purple camouflage pants. And I bought them probably for about 30 quid. And I was like, wow. I think this is the coolest pants in the world <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was going to a nightclub that night in Cavan so I got off the bus wearing the pants at the nightclub wild and as soon as I stepped off the bus it was like I got the bends like this sort of <laughs> cultural <laughs> bends I'm like whoa what am I doing here <laughs> and everyone so they were like what are you fucking wearing <laughs> What are those trousers? It would have hurt people to see you. Yeah. Like, like uh, So if you can imagine, like purple, big, lumpy cargo, I yeah. suppose you call them, cargo camo pants with like tassels coming like off. Fucking so like if I spun around, <laughs> yeah. I would look like a pretty dancer. And like Cowboy I just, Prince. I never wore them again. I think I burned them. Uh, but it was around that time so that So stupid, I, so stupid. So stupid. Oh. Um... <laughs> Chewing glass. Yeah. Um, so it was around that time I discovered the Central Bank kids and I kind of got in with them mm. one Saturday and uh, me and my friend Niall um, and we're like, they were like, hey, we're going to go to a gig in the Temple Bar Music Centre. So we did and I like, saw some mediocre band I bought their CD. Yeah. And I was like, this is the people I want to live with. Mm. And of course, I swerved to avoid them. <laughs> yeah. <now. laughs> yeah, well, you wouldn't want to hit anyone in your car. <laughs> Do you know, I was thinking we were. I was listening to Sonny was asleep in the car, and I started listening. I was just listening to Bruce Springsteen album. I was listening to Nebraska, yeah. and I was thinking of like how. Hill State Trooper, yeah. Please don't bother me, because every time I'm like, if I've had a couple of pints the night before, yeah, and I'm driving early, and I'm like, oh, I don't know, I might be over the limit. <laughs> I had that song in my head, Mr. Stay Trooper, <laughs> please don't stop me. Even though I think the song is about killing a cop. Yeah, I think it's about a serial killer. The whole album. Yeah. Oh right. Yeah. I just love the Well they blew up the chicken man in Philly <laughs> last night. <laughs> they blew up the chicken man. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there was feathers, feathers everywhere <laughs> for miles. But anyway, I was playing that. And then I was thinking to myself <laughs> about how I heard of Nebraska and I was like, Oh, I remember what happened was I was in HMV, I bought the Rules of Attraction, the book, Brett Snellis, loved it. Mm. And then there was a section in it where Sean, who's Patrick Bateman's younger brother, 
the sociopath goes back to his room can't find any weed puts on Nebraska is like oh. and we and like he's like this is the longest time he held an orgasm or something like that it's the entire length of Nebraska by Bruce Springsteen and then it's like that was my Saturday I read that and then the next Saturday it's like well now I'm going to go into town and buy the Nebraska CD like how and, and it, it made and me have so a long come <laughs> long come <laughs> I don't know there was something that just made me feel so nostalgic for how simple that was of oh I've only heard about that album from a book that I read and then yeah. I walked in and I bought the actual album and I was like listen to it like huh that's what he was talking about you know yeah those things felt um, they had more value when you thought about them for a while and then you had to hunt for it and yeah to capture it whereas now with Spotify we just we got it too easy got it too easy got it too easy but baby. I feel like everything everything good is looking forward to something like you on the bus looking forward to getting the CD but yeah. like it's the whole thing Mm. That's why I hate when people are like stag parties are the big one. Yo, big I time. look forward to stag parties so much. <laughs> yeah, and then I'm on them. I'm like, this is grand. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's kind of a you're like, what should we, should we like jock someone? Should we like you know fucking so do shots? My the craziest stag party story. Oh my I god, have. this is crazy. Okay, tune in. Maybe this should just be for the Patreon guys because <laughs> it's gonna get spicy. <laughs> So my friend Jermid, um, who you know, mm-hmm. he's a he's a cameraman and a comedy writer. He's quite a mild mannered dude. Yes. Um, he's not a crazy man. No. He's quite a mild, funny dude. And um, it was his stag, and all he wanted to do for a stag was to watch some bad movies. Mm. You know, uh, with his buddies, have some beers. We're not going to go to a strip club. Mm-hmm. We're not going to go to a casino bar. Yeah. Uh, we're not going to kill a prostitute. <laughs> nah. nah. We're just going to watch some bad movies. Good boys. Um, nice boys. So we watched Demo and Ivor the movie. And I think we watched The Foreigner with Jackie Chan. <laughs> yeah. uh, and the Demo and Ivor one, um, we started. <laughs> I think I talked about this before. <laughs> yeah, you? you've talked uh, about this before. <laughs> on d- after watching Demo and Ivor, we we're like, let's check out the IMDb page. Mm-hmm. So then we started adding uh, like mad facts under the IMDB uh, <laughs> trivia section. <laughs> and like the key to infiltrating the trivia section of IMDB mm. is to be subtle. Yeah. Is to don't be too crazy. No. Don't say like, you know, oh, there was a you know, a man got killed, mm-hmm. you know. Um say say silly. So we we put stuff that's quite boring. Yeah. But quite <laughs> believable. And to this day, the majority of them are <laughs> still up. So you can go on the Dame One for IMDB page. Um some of these are actually just true. Uh, yeah. Like, <laughs> Andy Quirk appears in the film uncredited as the character John Joe. That's true. If you look at the credits, yeah. he's listed as Damo Ivor, but not John Joe. Like, that's yeah, and that's one of yours? That's one of ours. Wow. Um, that's, a re- that's a good one. That's like so a real one. In the <laughs> uh, Simon Delaney's last film, which was true at the time. <laughs> it was the last film he did. It just makes it sound like he's dead. <laughs> um, after shooting the fun fair scenes as a special treat, the cast and crew were allowed to go on the rides. <laughs> which is a lovely image. That is a lovely image. Was, um, My favourite, though, is the to get into character. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was removed. Oh, that was so removed. To get oh. into the character, you know, Damo and Ivor. Damo is a very ri- uh, a poor man. Mm-hmm. And Ivor is quite a rich man. Mm-hmm. It's a rich man, poor man mm-hmm. story. Of the north side and the south side. A tale of two cities. Sides, yeah. um, so to get into the character of Damo and Ivor, for lunch every day, Andy Quirk would eat uh, chips and caviar. <laughs> so it's the poor man's, <laughs> yes, it is. Poor man's dinner. And yeah, of course, and all rich men <laughs> eat caviar exclusively. every day. Yeah. <laughs> um, all the police officers that appeared in the film are played by real members of Angarda Siakana. That's oh. still on IMDb. Um, Martin Maloney provided his own clothing for his role. <laughs> <laughs> Martin Maloney plays a traveller in the film. Um, several scenes were filmed in independent businesses and shops run by fans of the show. They're just odd facts. Yeah. That are not true. Um, according to the official website, Demo's blood type is O negative and Ivers is AV positive. Um, there are three references. <laughs> this one's the stupidest. There are three references to eggs in the film. <laughs> And eight chickens are seen on screen. Egg is the name of one of the production companies that produced the film. <laughs> that's, that's factually <laughs> accurate. Now, spoiler. Ooh. The grandmother's funeral occurs at approximately one hour and 14 minutes into the film. Don't read that unless you want to know that the granny dies in the is film. That, is that literally just the that we when did, that happens? We, and just, we w- went back to when she died and we were like, let's put it into spoilers. <laughs> See, I know how much crack that is. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. A lot of that we did loads of Simon Delaney being a notorious prankster, mm. but all of his pranks were very sweet and yeah. nice. They weren't like um, George Clooney, yeah, you know, filling your 
filling your trailer full of cum. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a mad he did. Sending you a rat like Which Jared Leto. Jared <laughs> so we had stuff I'm gonna like send him a rat. Uh, notorious <laughs> prankster Simon Delaney, on one of the days, dressed up as the chef. And served everyone food at dinner time. Oh, yeah, just yeah. With the accent and everything. The Italian <laughs> uh, or one of the days, notorious prankster Simon Delaney brought in a box of Bichon Freeze pu- puppies for everyone to play with. Is that on there? No, they removed it. That, uh, that's too, un- that's removed, too crazy. They removed all the Simon Delaney yeah. prankster ones. So um, that was the kind of vibe at the sag party. <laughs> but were you? But were and you still looking up, looking forward to that? With uh, this, with the same kind of, I was because there wasn't as much build up. Yeah. So there was no build up for that stag, mm. and I ended up having a great time. On mm. the same stag, Peter McGann fell asleep, mm. and you know what do you do when a lad falls asleep? Oh my god! Stag? Crank out the markers. So we did. I think a Hitler is in town. <laughs> <laughs> I think Hitler's come back. <laughs> yeah, no. That's what you'd say if Hitler come back. <laughs> I think there's a Hitler. I think there's a in Hitler in town. So Peter McGann had the idea of. Um, we should all draw cocks on our own faces. <laughs> so that when, when uh, no, sorry, Jermud had the idea. Peter fell asleep. Peter began fell asleep. So Jermud, the stag, had the idea. So when Peter woke up, we all had cocks on our faces, but not his face. <laughs> and we were like, ah, 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 got you, man. Oh, we got you so bad. That's good. And he was just so confused. He just went home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was such <laughs> nice boy. It was a nice boy stag. That's nice. So little build up, mm-hmm. great, um, great stag. But I think that's, I think that is the key to it. Like I, I've been moaning on this. I've bemoaned on this podcast before those people who do that kind of thing, being like, I've been in New Zealand for four years. I'm going to surprise my mom. Being like, don't you know all she has is the nine month build up to be like, oh, Niall's coming back in, in, in nine months. That is true. That's, there's no one likes surprises. People just do it for the, the for, gram. Totally. But also, why are you four years away? I think of your, your, your daughter now, like the idea that they would fly oceanic yeah. and go over there and be like and not come back for four years and then do it as a surprise on a different planet basically different planet um, but I do I suppose I do like an Irish mammy surprised reaction it's nice but like you know it's so it's it's primal it is well it's as primal as it can get yeah. being oh. so subdued and so p- with everything pushed down you kind of get an like idea of what they're like in bed <laughs> wow okay <laughs> oh oh Jesus oh Tony's back Oh, my little baby boy is back. She says that, yeah. <laughs> she says during sex. During sex, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my little baby boy is back. My boy's back from New Zealand. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> You're stop, all please here. Stop talking. Please stop talking. Please stop talking. Please, please just stop talking. Shut up, shut up. Stop talking with shut your up. son. <laughs> stop talking with your son. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. They say that it's a one eighth of an orgasm. Is is, 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 is your, your, your son, son returning back. back from Australia? Is one eighth of an orgasm? Yeah. So if you if your son came back from <laughs> New Zealand and you sneezed yeah. ten times, wow. you'd come. You'd come. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Tony, I'm not going to lie to you. I got nothing prepared. For I'm nothing prepared either. I'm nothing to ask yeah. you. No, um, got, like you said, you're like have a, have a think of a subject. And whatever. I was like, mm. Whatever. I'm like half passionate about forty things. Me too. I'm a, I'm a good like deep dive on a headline kind of thing I'll read as far as a headline and be like I know everything about that I'm going to bring that up at dinner tonight to my wife I do <laughs> I do pass off headlines like I've read the articles mm. then if anyone says wait hold on a second mm-hmm. then I'm lost I'm like I don't know I love Twitter now does a thing where like I can retweet being like you haven't actually read this article are you yeah. sure you want to retweet alright Twitter I love it you're not my dad <laughs> no yeah. I remember using the phrase kangaroo court with my dad like about 10 years ago during some election that sounds fun and I was like oh it's just gonna, it's just a kangaroo court dad and he goes what is that <laughs> yeah, good. good the only thing in my head was an actual like court filled with kangaroos with wigs and gavels <laughs> I don't know what it means does it mean that they're hopping mad in there or <laughs> what does it mean it means there's a tiny lawyer in their pocket <laughs> <laughs> It's a fucking kangaroo court, Dad. Is that what you want? What does that mean? Fine Gael government, bloody kangaroo court all over the place. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I know, like, what's the other one? Like, uh, fucking turnstiled, I don't know, government. Well, that's, that's just for football matches. <laughs> Whatever. To stop people breaking in. No, the revolving door. Oh, it's a bloody revolving door. Revolving government. door government. Yeah, one guy gets in, another guy gets out. So thanks very much for holding the door. And do you know what they don't tell you? They're all fucking marsupials as well. What? <laughs> I misheard two things. <laughs> I think there's a there's a lovely freedom in admitting both to yourself and your friends. I'm not that bright. Mm. I'm not smart. 
Well, you are smart, but like yeah, in the no. very specific things that you're into. That's not smart. That's not what that is. It is smart. That's not smart. Smart is not deciding that because what everyone is talking about, you need to know about that. The politics and all. <laughs> Literature and all. About the world. Um, no, there's a lovely, I think I've accepted in my 35th year, I'm, I'm kind of a dumb guy. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's, it's are, so free and especially in political discourse and pubs mm. where you're just like, oh, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm do, you know what like, I, do you know what I do? I do it. <laughs> I do like, I don't talk politics, guys. Because <laughs> I know, <laughs> fuck all. I'm, I don't talk politics, guys, please. I'm not going to talk politics. I just are having a good night. We're having a good night. Hey, we're having a good night. I don't want to get in. Look, it, you yeah, know, let's not talk about stuff I don't know. Hey, you want to invite Noam Chomsky here to the conversation? I think not. <laughs> let's just keep it cool. Yeah. I also steal my wife's opinions because she's do, smarter than that. me. I do that all the time. Yeah. Because Siobhan, um, like Siobhan's not a comedian or like, uh, she doesn't talk on telly or give her opinions on mm-hmm. things. I'm like, you're not using anything. Yeah, they're gold bills. <laughs> I'll have that. I need shit, Siobhan. <laughs> I mean, I'm taking that. It's a fucking content machine out there, Siobhan. What do you expect? <laughs> it's revolving door content. Yeah, they're all marsupials. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I yeah I don't I don't f with that s, but I also take a lot of comfort now in being like, what are you talking about, you know? Because also like I might be I might talk about the specs of an iPhone and people will be like I don't know what you're fucking talking about, mm. you know? So if someone's talking about you know, Leo Radker, <laughs> I can't even think of a political anything, <laughs> you know? Uh, the turf man, right? Yeah. I don't know anything about the turf man. Are you talking about the Kerry politicians when you said the turf man? No, the oh, turf ban. T T E or F. No, the turf ban. The ban on. Oh, the turf ban. I think you said the turf man. The turf man. Graham Linehan. Yeah, <laughs> the turf man. I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I just think uh, <laughs> Graham Linehan and his family have been cutting turf mm. outside their house for centuries now. We have to let them, you know, use that as the pull quote. For let them burn it. I support Graham Linehan <laughs> and his whole turf. Thing, whatever that is, <laughs> whatever, whatever that is, and you know, Eamon Ryan, you oil, need to stop telling getting, this oil guy. Oil is getting very expensive. It is. <laughs> if he's a turf man, well then guess what? Hey, I support him. I'll, I'll have a fireside <laughs> chat with him any day. <laughs> <laughs> he could set the world to rights. We'll set up a nice fire. I was reading there, Kevin, um, that having a second child mm. is oh, like. So so much harder. I've been reading recently. Yeah, we've synced our we've synced our breeding. What does that what does that mean? We've synced our breeding. You're having a child at the same time as me. Oh right, yeah. Okay. So we, I have a child, <laughs> you have a child, and we're both having another child at we the are. same time. Yes, opposite genders each time. So if we are going for a heteronormative family, mm-hmm. we can get them all. Yeah, boxed off. Bam, or bam, bam, bam. either way, we got our bases covered. Um, yeah, I think. Um, I've, I've heard, heard it's much. I've heard it's much. I've heard it's much harder. Yeah. In what respect? Like what? In the way that you and I would be like white knuckled ha- fighting with our nails bed into our old life. <laughs> yeah. We actually now have to completely let go. I mean, I think I pretty much. I'm pretty much. Ha- pretty much am. have. I pretty much have. The good thing about stand up comedy is that it's, it's built in holidays. It's, bi- it's built in holidays for festivals and stuff. But it's also like you, you get to say to your wife, you're like, I have to go to a pub now for four hours mm. <laughs> oh I wish I didn't oh, I got a fucking gig man I gotta go to a fucking pub now this drink. is so annoying I have to do that I'm gonna be sitting there laughing at jokes and then making people laugh and then drinking four points oh, it's just oh, wait, what? Oh, I have to really go now it's five to seven mm. it's like the gig until nine <laughs> I know but why are you funny. looking at, why are you always looking at my Instagram <laughs> why are you always looking at my Instagram <laughs> that's what they tell people yeah you have to tell Irish audience that the gig starts two hours after it actually starts. Yeah. So they, they arrive late mm-hmm. somehow. Mm-hmm. I haven't thought this through. <laughs> um, so that, I mean, that I think that kind of keeps me sane. Yeah. Like I realise if I don't if I don't have a gig for a week or so, I do get a bit antsy. Mm. And um, a bit kind of um, Jack Nicholson in The Shining. And start <laughs> typing out the same sentence yeah. on a laptop. <laughs> to be honest, shy. I just write it out once and I just do copy. Yeah, yeah. He was a moron. Yeah, he didn't have a... I bet he'd give it all up for half a, a laptop. That's it. He was using the old Underwood. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, I haven't really thought about it that much. Do you know what I found? The out? first child was amazing. Like, yes. I, my first child is so good mm-hmm. that I'm hoping that the second one kind of like copies her style. I hear it's just pure feral, mm. you know, pure Will Ferrell. 
I think I think the idea is nature makes the first one very easy, and then you're like, that was a walk in the park mm-hmm. for the men. Yeah, and then uh, <laughs> the second one, yeah, is a nightmare. Well, I've heard that. I mean, obviously, the biggest, you know, it does, it's it's not going to uproot your life in the same way that the first does. No. But um, but yeah, I have heard that the the second is just a lot. L- it, so a lot more to do, a lot higher pressure mm. with significantly less time. So that's yeah. also something. But you're also I I have this fantasy, right? Uh, and I'm hoping that <laughs> it's another Patreon cut. <laughs> no, I have this dream situation where two I'm girls. Kinda, and I don't want two girls. One. Me. One, one sandwich. <laughs> one sandwich. <laughs> I'm the ham. <laughs> um I'm the pickle. I'm a pickle. <laughs> no, I have a, I have a, I have a kind of. Uh, obviously, I don't want to be wishing away the first four years of my child's life, and I've really enjoyed, and especially now when the at the age they are now, it's just great crack all the time. Mm. But I kind of have this real kind of smug fantasy that when like Sonny's like seven, and the next one's like four and a half or five, and they can kind of look after themselves, <laughs> even though they can. But like you know, they they go to bed and they stay in bed, maybe you know, yeah. and then I have other friends of mine who don't have kids and they'll be like fucking pulling their hair out and I'll just get to stand on the mountain and just fucking just laugh a little bit and chuckle yeah I mean I was I was out with um, a few people the other night and one of them they're both kind of the same age men and one of them's kids were like fully grown they were like in college and stuff and working and the other one had like a young kid Mm. and I I couldn't help but feel like oh yeah that's gonna be I'm gonna be the the guy with yeah. the grown up kids yeah um because people are having kids way later so yeah i am looking forward to there is times where like uh yeah you're you're dealing with parenthood and you're like oh, i can't wait for 15 years down the line yeah. you're like actually looking forward to something 15, <laughs> 15 years 15 away years down the line yeah <laughs> um have a little man cave do that whole thing um i think if i, I if feel I, such an outdated thing you it is you can't an do outdated man thing it, it is. It should be a person cave. It's a person cave, and everyone gets to share it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, well, I, I would like to have some kind of, I would like to have some sort of podcasting space. But because what's great about that is it's all on a computer that you can kind of masquerade it as well as a podcasting space. But it's also like video games, maybe. And yeah. A comfy chair is the same chair you need for podcasting. And have you noticed that, um, because podcasts are all videoed now. Uh, once they reach a certain level of fame, mm. they get to like cover their room in like a fucking forbidden planet yeah, I know. sale. Yeah, yeah. It's just like fucking like even uh, <laughs> out Darren uh, Conway, mm-hmm. uh, his podcast with Joe McGuckin. Yeah, um, I didn't think they'd be kind of nerdy guys. Yeah, I know they got a lot of nerdy shit. They got a lot of shit from Dublin City Comics. Yeah, is it? Yeah, are they sponsored by them or something? They um, just, just like comic books and stuff. I think they just lend it to them, and then okay, if they need yeah, to, yeah. if they. Yeah, run low on stock. So, like, there you go. That's a man cave I know. with a microphone. I know. You know. So, I think there's ways of doing geek a smart... Geek cave. Little geek cave. Yeah. Biting the fucking heads off kitchens. kitchens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. But, I, I mean, it would have to be a person cave. I'm I'm now looking at, like, getting a 10 by 10 shed and just figuring out if I can do something with that. Yeah. Soundproof it. Because this is the thing. Everything that we do... Yeah, here's the thing. Here's the thing. You with Alec Baldwin. Here's the thing. The thing that I... I, I feel like we're all, we all just want to go back to the shed. We all just want to go back to the shed, drink the cans, the mm. same people, the same chat, just the exact same vibe, hot box the fuck out of it. Did you have a shed when you were like my teenager? Dan, my mate Dan in the shed. And we, we Did you smoke joints in it? Yeah, we had, we had a great time in there. So yeah, you just want to get back to the shed. Yeah, my buddy had a shed, shed and like, it was amazing. Mm. Like a shed where his mammy never visits. Yeah. Yeah. And if you, if you respect the shed as well, like yeah, I'd you like, gotta I'd respect like, the shed. I'd like my son to ha- be entitled to a shed, yeah, because it's probably one of the greatest things. Oh shit! Someday your son is gonna want your He's shed. He's gonna want the shed, <sighs> and I'm probably gonna have to get another shed because you don't have my shed. You have to have the Mufasa chat. <laughs> Everything the light touches is my fucking shed. <laughs> <laughs> so don't go in it. No, but I feel like if he, I'd love him to respect the shed, mm. you know, and clean up after himself with the shed. Yeah. You know, I'll be a hard ass with it. I'll be like, no, you're not coming back in there then. Yeah. You know, because I was let off so easy to do whatever the wa- I want. You I were a real somehow pup, I'd say. I was a real pup. Mm-hmm. I remember one time I got sick at the front of my house, down my house, because I was so, uh, you know, hanging. And then my ma, I woke up, my ma was cleaning the front of the house and then said, I'll be up in a minute with a bacon sandwich. Yeah. My you know f- what I mean? My friends, my friend had a shed, my friend Niall had a shed and one evening, one night, we were in the local nightclub, which was like, you know, a stone's throw from his house. I was 
too sick to continue. Mm-hmm. Right? I was like just busy pulling a whitey. And I climbed across his gate. I didn't want to disturb his mum. Climbed across his gate, went into the shed and just lay down on the couch. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm just go sleep here. But then all my idiot friends came through the house looking for me. And they're like, is Kevin here? And they're like, check the shed. Sure enough, I was. Oh. Completely uh, destroying the whole purpose of me climbing the gate. Yeah, I didn't you want to bother discreet. mama. Yeah. I respect sheds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I respect sheds. <laughs> But I feel like we, we we all just want to get back to the shed. Everyone's like, oh, let's go to this bar and I do cocktails or this place is like an actual wine bar or this place is fucking... Everyone just wants to... It's, it's the exact same vibe yeah. where it can. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. With a busted up couch. Someone I know, um, they were... they Their friend made good mon- a lot of money on crypto. Oh. And they took him and a group of friends, like 20 of them, on a proper lotto, like one of your ads. <laughs> Uh, like like, what would you do if you had a little shitload of money flew them all to Ibiza they rented a mansion everything taken care of they were on a private jet and everything but he said that like when he was on the, the jet like coming back he was all like it's kind of the same buzz as a can on a bus oh my god like it is I mean it's fancier yeah. Yeah. but it's all kind of the Hugely same thing expensive can on a bus but the juice the juice is not worth it's just taking the organisational time to mm. say hey, do you want us all get together in this one location is yeah. really the beginning and the end of it all. Yeah. So what he really should have done was bought a shed, just <laughs> yeah. put it in the middle of a field somewhere. Yeah. Nice fridge, busted up couch, mm-hmm. have the crack, then burn the shed. Then burn the shed. Burn the shed. For me, the action is the juice. It's <laughs> a little heat quote there. Are you going to get a, uh, a shed? Are you inclined well, I mean, for a man cave I, space? I don't know. I, I can't. I can't. I can't. Um, can't just by now, but... Can't envision a world in which I have a house mm. so um, I'm going to get a house first it, Siobhan would be mad if I bought a shed before I bought a house sure fair yeah. and we we'll end up living in the shed <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well this bloody revolving door government who knows bloody fucking hopping mad these guys <laughs> kangaroo Cobby should bring me to bloody kangaroo court <laughs> hop all over me <laughs> so Kevin tell us about the, the, the tour you're doing uh Oh, you know me, Tony. I like to keep tight-lipped about these things. <laughs> uh, well, there's nothing to say. I'm doing a tour, a uh, stand-up comedy tour. I'll be yeah. telling stand-up comedy mm-hmm. um, in various locations around the country. You're if looking you forward live. to it? Uh, I am and I am not Like, comedy gets lonelier, like, the further on you get. Like, mm. at the start, you know, and like, you're doing a gig with eight people. It's the best crack ever. Mm-hmm. And then, like, eventually, you're just doing a gig by yourself. mm so it's good and to have a good. You drive there, you drive home. Yeah, you drive there, you drive home. It's good to have a good um, support mm. that you can um, have pints and celebrate or commiserate with. Yes, depending on how well, how well the gigs go. Yes. So yeah, no, I am looking forward to it. Yeah, do you like gigging? I do. <laughs> do you like touring rather? Um, I do, I do, but it's again like I get very excited at the start, mm. and obviously going on stage is great, but there's a lot, you know. Um, and there's a buzz. And what I've realized as well is that I, I always used to think that there was like, oh, once you do the gig, then that's it. It's over. But like there's a really long tapered feeling of excitement that takes a long time yeah. to, 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 to wrap up. And so now like so I'm, I'm kind of gotten a bit better beforehand. It was all like, well, that's eight. That's eight pints. That has to be eight pints. And that's the only thing for, it, you know, it's a hard thing to explain to someone. It's like you, you've no idea the buzz you feel, the adrenaline. The adrenaline you get on stage, man, the only way to combat that medically is eight points. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. That's why I'm not coming home. Okay. And that is why, officially. <laughs> yeah, it's a text. It's send not even it. a call. Yeah. <laughs> send, send. Turn off the phone. Phone the bin. <laughs> um, how have you enjoyed putting to putting this one together? Um, I How have I enjoyed? It's been good. Although I had a, I had a mini panic attack. Um, so I, I, it was, it was kind of all new stuff and I was really proud of it. And I was, I rang up Carl Spain, Carl's great at like just helping you with punchlines and toppers. And I was like, oh, this joke is so much better. Thanks, Carl. Mm -hmm. And I had one joke, um, that was doing well and I was coming up to support Dylan Moran. And I was like, I got my 20 minutes locked and loaded. Mm. I've never been so sure about every word I'm going to say. And uh, right before going to sleep, I watched Norm Macdonald's last special that mm. he recorded in his house and a joke that I'd written word for word, but he said it a lot <laughs> quicker, mm-hmm. is in his special. Oh. And I was like, I, I, I don't want to give up this joke. Mm-hmm. 
because it's like it's a three minute joke mm. that's good mm -hmm. and uh, I, you have to you have to drop it mm. you have to drop it mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, it was even though he's too, dead I know what's he gonna say he shouldn't have released it what was it on fucking zoom he should have left it should have left it man I know it was uh, good I really enjoyed it it was really enjoyable uh, uh, yeah so that was annoying but you did it at that because I heard you blew the, blew the roof off of that gig I didn't see it it was good it was great, it was a great gig. yeah yeah um, a lot of pressure I wish I could get a bad habits of like hanging on to the mic. Do you do that? Mm, what do you mean? You know, you, you stand and you put your hand on the mic stand mm -hmm. and you just you think it looks casual, mm -hmm. but it actually looks like you're terrified of falling down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I don't think it does. I think yeah. that's just your thing, isn't it? I mean, it shouldn't be. I mean, Ricky Gervais wears it like this, like a cross because oh he's an God, atheist. A crucifix. Yeah, but you just put your hand on it. Well, he gets crucified for his beliefs. Well... I mean, bloody soft media. That's the thing about these bloody pilgrims, the pioneers. They unfortunately have to take a lot of the fucking arrows. They do, yeah, yeah. Some of the stuff he comes out with. It's pretty brilliant. I think he's a brilliant genius. Um, I don't know. I don't. I love. Do the you office, know what we should? But, um, we should do. I love. I don't like his turf shit. I love when you see. Um, is he against cutting turf as well? <laughs> um, I love when you see four or five American dudes on a podcast, and for some reason they're smoking cigars. Yeah. It's a fucking bizarre <laughs> it's a thing. Because thing, yeah. smoking a cigar is never as cool as you think it's never no. as cool in your like as it is in your mind mm -hmm. and um it's 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 the lamest thing in the world i find and that it, and and like and that kind of scotch like inaccessibly hey, burning want you want do you want a, everything to fucking burn for like hours you want a raw steak with some <laughs> scotch in the cigar for the podcast when you're just going <laughs> making the worst noises yeah, your mouth has ever made um, so we should be doing that yeah we should sorry well talking about PC gun mad mm -hmm. I saw um, in England there saw a policeman there um, <laughs> just took ducks out of the pond and started licking the beaks fucking PC gun mad that was good <laughs> <laughs> I did actually make a joke with my because I did spilt a latte on my computer and I started oh, sputtering loads it was oh, yeah. PC gun PC mad PC gun mad man um, how do you write I was a in, joke I um, was in a computer store the other day go on yeah and uh, I was like, can I bring this computer home and see what it's like before I buy it? And they were like, no. And I was like, oh, fucking PC world we're living in. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. I was, uh, my mate Jordan was telling me, you know, it was, it was Aaron's um, boy, boyfriend. And Aaron was doing some like script doctoring. And I was trying to think of script doctor, script doctor, like a doctor, doctor joke. Yeah. And the best. That, and but I was, he was like talking to me for a while and I was quiet. And he's like, what's wrong with you? He's like, I'm trying to think I'm of a <laughs> script doctor, script I'm doctor joke. Of the worst joke in the world. Yeah. I ended up with um, uh, script doctor, script doctor. I don't know how to finish my sentences. Period. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I could think of. Uh, Come on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I got, I got, I got no script doctor jokes at all. Um, I don't want to follow you down that road. That's fine. It's not very good, and it's not a very fruitful world. Um, do you? What do you? What's your favorite part of writing or getting a joke ready? Oof. Um, I don't. It's a nice. Obviously, it's a nice feeling when you come up with something. A lot of this, mm. like I, I'm very bad at just sitting down and writing, and then something amazing comes up. It's mostly comes from. Um, daydreaming or talking to people and mm -hmm. you're like oh actually that's quite funny yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you know the favourite part is, is trying it and it works mm. you know um, but a lot of time your favourite jokes are not the jokes that people like no and you can sometimes you like fucking try them 18 times and it's just does not work that's what's amazing about a podcast is that the, the vacuum silence in this room to all the funny things that I yeah. say I kind of just assume the receiving end is like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But it's probably but that gives you great freedom. I like, I, I do, I love listening to your podcast. Um, and I'm not. It's are you bad at listening to your mates' podcasts? Um, people I really like. Um, like, you're, you're like I'm not going to yeah, list them. To say that. There's like, it's like eight or nine people <laughs> yeah, I know is. who do podcasts. I mm. never really listen to their podcast. No, I don't. I li I listen to a few and um. I listen to bits of a few. I, I feel like a lot of the time when I see clips, I'm like, oh, that's great. I got the, you know. The best thing with the clips is you can say to them, oh, man, that bit. Yeah. I don't know what minute of the podcast it was. Sure. But the bit about the chicken is brilliant. And mm -hmm. they're like, oh, thanks, man. Yeah. But you've only listened to the clips. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Instagram. Yeah. Well, that's very, I do appreciate you saying that because I know how hard it is to listen to someone uh, who you're maybe jealous of. <laughs> I, um, there, was a, there was a joke 
I I did once. It's funny the comedians um usually like the joke that nobody else in the audience liked. Yeah. Um Barry Murphy's Barry Murphy's, Barry Murphy's loves, great for that. If the worse your joke is, yeah. the more Barry Murphy you like. If it's brave. Yeah. Yeah, go Barry, out there. Yeah. Tell it. Fuck them. Fuck them. <laughs> Fuck the audience. <laughs> Fuck the audience who paid to see you. Yeah. They're idiots. Like it's He always has a story about someone being like, this guy, he was from Nottingham. he come out fucking... Pull his cacks down, shit in the pot, like fuck them. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, it's always someone who had like a crazy yeah, story. You just, you just shave on stage. That's shave it. All you just shave on stage for you know, for twenty years. Just come out and stay. Yeah. Genius. Genius. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. There was one I was supporting um, but Foil, he's Foil Arms and Hog years ago, like maybe ten years ago. Mm. And um back when No, I just I think piglet. I just got Republic of Telly. Mm. And um I came out and I was like, Yeah, you know, people are expecting you know, once you get on TV you change, you know. Uh, like start buying expensive things, going to a different restaurant, talking different, have different opinions. Mm-hmm. It's like I honestly, I'm pretty much the same guy that I was, you know, before I became hugely famous. Like you know, <laughs> like I'm pretty much. If you met me uh, today, it would be I'd be the same guy um, that you met like five years ago. Like I haven't bought anything extravagant, no big cars, apart from this gun. And I took <laughs> out a gun on stage <laughs> and just start sort of petting it. And I was like, yeah, it's just like, you know, when people come up to you, you know, you don't know who's who. And it's like, I just That's like, great. I like having the gun. And like, it looks like a real, it was a prop gun. Yeah. And I never did it again. And Foil Arms and Hogs still come up to me like, man, you should do that gun. <laughs> that is really funny. I don't know. Is it funny? I don't. That's I think it's very, just very funny, funny to comedians. That's, but that's very. <laughs> well, that's just apart from the gun. Apart from the gun. <laughs> I bought the gun. Yeah. <laughs> I always thought. I've I've always been trying to figure out a good gun bit of like just walking around being like how amazing it would just be to be get a gun yeah. you know get on the bus being like one sixty five no no it's not <laughs> no it's not no it's not <laughs> <laughs> but like real down blame no it's not you, just sit down. you don't use it for have anything another, crazy have another goal man have another goal yeah 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 or you get like a you go into like we've actually stopped. ninth we've, coffee free we've, or tenth coffee free oh there's only nine there oh I think I saw ten <laughs> I think I saw ten uh, stamps there's um there's four little small holes in that card. There's going to be four little small holes in you if you don't fucking put another hole in that card. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit clunky. <laughs> it's a bit clunky. <laughs> like just going like, yeah. sorry, we've actually stopped serving five minutes ago. Did we? Yeah. Did we, yeah? That's mad. Just drop it on the yeah. counter. <laughs> just leave it yeah. down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's disappointing. It's like, oh, but I really wanted the sausage McMuffin. Oh. <laughs> what are you buying in the pub? <laughs> no, oh, you're, you're, get, jo- get you're talking steak. about the breakfast. Yeah, it's like 11.35 steak. or something. <laughs> But I was so hungry with a Oh, I'm so stupid. I thought I remembered the time. It's like Tony Cantwell <laughs> doing falling down. <laughs> <laughs> this turns oh, oh, I want to live like my Oh, I want I could do falling down. I could do a tough guy. Mm. What's the toughest shit you ever did? Toughest shit? I don't mean dump. I know. Dump, yeah. I um, mean, when is where is you at your toughest? I'm pretty tough for people on the phone when I need to get like Oh, when you're better miles broadband. away. Yeah, it's pretty tough. <laughs> Uh, oh, the toughest thing I ever did, and then I got, you know, my ass kicked for it was, um, which is stupid, where we were in Eddie Rockets when they made Eddie Rockets twenty four hour, like within the week of them making Eddie for, uh, Rockets oh twenty four hour, God. and we were in that one up beside the Olympia, three old Olympia, and um, we went in, and uh, my friends got up and went to the toilet, three girls, and then this girl just sat down, and she was like, "Fuck," and I was like, "Oh, sorry, you can't sit there," and she's like, "Fuck off." And I was like, no, like my friends just got up. They're going to be back here in a second. <laughs> like, and she's like, well, I'm not fucking going anywhere. And wow. Then, and then she, uh, it was a big ballsy move. And then this fella came up who was her boyfriend. And she go, and he goes, here, what's happening here? Yeah. And then I said, I quoted uh, uh, Axel Rose. Oh, wow. And I said, welcome to the jungle. Baby. <laughs> 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 no, Axel Rose said to like, Kurt Cobain, Courtney Love. Anyway, I said, hey, bro. Oh, wow. You need to put a muzzle on your bitch. Oh, my God. And he we, we he smacked me oh in the God, face. Oh, Tony, that was such an ill-judged yeah. thing to say. Although, I have to say, because I'm so soft-spoken and a little softy boy, he was pretty tough. We had a big scrap outside. Did and you? then when the guards came around, I was all like, look, he's after attacking me. I'm so sorry, guys. Oh, my God. And he's like, no, this fucker's after fucking. And he <laughs> was up here. <laughs> like and my, I was down the here. Guard, the guard is just going through the little computer in his brain. Yeah. He's going, uh, this lad, he's a soft lad. Yeah, soft, he, posh, he's posh a boy. Posh boy from a good family. Yes. I mean, he doesn't likely, no, likely no crime. Oh, angry, yeah. angry Northside yeah. man. Get yeah. in the car. Well, just kind of told him to jog on, you know. Wow. But I got the seats back. 
and a few smacks from my <laughs> from my face. Uh, so that was tough, but dumb. Yeah, that was dumb and tough. One tough thing I did as well, but it was like tough and meek, was um, there was a guy, this guy, he used to drive the 29A bus, and he was always short of people. He was like, get your change ready. Oh. And then he'd be like, we'd be like 135 or whatever, and we'd have headphones in. I'm not happy with my life choices. Exactly. And he's like, <laughs> speak up. <laughs> yeah, 135. Yeah. yeah. Like, press it. Whatever. And then I was all like, and so he, I did that. And one time I was like, you can't fucking talk to people like that. And I was getting all real p- hyped up at the back of the bus, like getting primed. And then I, I was, I was like, I'm gonna fucking say something to him, and so I got off and my stop, whatever, and like on uh, O'Connell Street, and then like I, I walk him by, and I, and I was like, no, I was, no, I will, and I turn back and I was like, you fuck off, like real oh. meek, like you fuck off, and he's like, oh. and I walked off, tough, uh, but quite recently I brought Wallace, my twenty-month-year-old daughter, mm-hmm. on the bus, and I got on the bus. She's in a pram. Got on the bus paid for my thing and he charged me like a child as well it's like adult and child I'm sitting down I'm like it's a fucking child man. she's a fucking baby babies are free aren't they mm-hmm. babies are free I looked it up and it's like yeah up till three babies mm-hmm. are free it's a good rhyme that she That's uses in the ad <laughs> and I was like I'm gonna say something to this guy because like, yeah. he seemed a bit gruff and I was like yeah I'm gonna fucking say something so I'm getting off the bus and I was like uh, oh by the way just so you know uh, children under three ride free and he goes, yeah, no. And I was like, oh, well, you, ch- you charged me for her. He goes, did I? Oh, I'm so sorry. And I was like, yeah, you did. He goes, oh, come here, I'll give you a point. Uh, no, it's fine. And it went from like me, I was going to like <laughs> lay down some yeah, truth, make yeah. him feel embarrassed. And he was like, oh, God, sorry, must have made it by mistake. And I was like, <laughs> that's fine, honestly. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> it's very lame. We're quite lame boys. We are quite lame boys. I did remember actually something tough that was cool that I did. And I was also on a bus. This bus driver, it was like the last bus home and he was fucking speeding and he was all like, there was lads, like he was kind of egging on these these lads who were like beside him. We're like, he's fucking mad at you, you know, drive faster. And he was like loving it, but he was clearly like fairly steamed and chatting shite to these lads. Sorry, who's driving the bus? The bus driver's driving the bus and there's these three lads. The bus driver's drunk. He, I think he was drunk. Wow. Because he was very excited and he was all <laughs> like, and he's all like, he was pointed at the guards being like, look at the fucking knob on that or whatever. He said some mad Could shit. Could you see like the that. guards cock? I don't know, but he said something mad. Look at the fucking, like, look at the knob on that. And then they were like, this is fucking, they were laughing. But there was this, like, a couple of old women who were like literally holding on to the things. So, like, he's driving too fast yeah. or whatever. So then the lads got off and he was still driving and he was like, he was kind of saying, like, wee! Like, he was kind of like, still stuck in the moment. Still stuck in the moment. And I was like, and, and I can't get out of it. And I can't get out of it. <laughs> Oh, you too. You've been there. <laughs> That's what that song is about. When it's about you're, you're fucking drunk, speeding, yeah. A drunk <laughs> driving bus driver <laughs> who's egged on by boys. <laughs> you don't say later will be better. No, so then all these women, they were like holding on to the thing and they were like getting like, fuck. And, you know, because he was going really fast. And yeah. They were like, so I said, hey, look, ma- look, 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 pal. <laughs> got some old ladies back here. <laughs> yeah, got some old. I said, hey, look, look, there's no, there's no rush. What's yeah. the rush? And he was all like, ah, fuck. He actually said, fuck off. Like, oh, fuck off, right? And I was like, so look, if I call that number and I say you're going that fast, what do you think they're going to say? And he's like, Ugh. and he got real grumbled or whatever. And he, he did start driving slower. And then when I got off, he, he actually said to me, sorry about that. Oh, wow. So he yeah. obviously was caught. He was just getting a bit excited. Getting a bit too excited with the boys. A bit too excited. He thought Boy he was one of the boys. Boy excitement is very contagious. It's f- it's a feral. I'm terrified of it. I'm terrified of seeing it in my, my young fella. Yeah. You know. Don't get too excited about boys. Don't get too excited. No, but that kind of, you know, you know that kind of energy where it's kind of like this static in the air and you're kind of like these boys could do, like you see a bunch of feral boys walking down the street. They're maybe like 14 and they're just like looking looking for something to kick or draw on. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. I was, I was thinking the other day, um, you know, yeah, there is gangs of like fourteen-year-old boys in usually grey tracksuit bottoms. Mm. It's like they buy them in packs. Mm-hmm. Um, and well, they fucking walk in packs. They do, and uh, they walk around, and people sort of like kind of get out of their way, like you know they're in Clockwork Orange. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking, I react the same way to like groups, like a big group of middle-aged women, in the exact same way. If you see a big group of middle-aged women who are out on the town and having a great time, mm-hmm. you fucking get out of their you way. Do. Yeah. You don't want to get mixed up in that. You don't. It could be worse. But it's not out of respect being like, oh my God. No, no, no. These are way. Here <laughs> come the girls. <laughs> you know? It's not a res- No, it's not a respect. It's a definitely a fear thing. Really? Yeah, it's like, ooh. But, like, but I'm a pup, so I don't fear I'm a little middle, puppy. Middle, middle-aged women. You yeah. know? I, middle-aged I, women normally come with a treat for me. <laughs> <laughs> what you have? 
What do you, what do you have? It's the first thing I say when I open, open up your handbags. Give me a sweet. What do you have? <laughs> Fuck all. <laughs> um, this is the, the toughest thing I've ever done. Yeah, go on. Uh, I told you a story. I hit a lad in the pub once. I know. I, d- I think you shouldn't have. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you that story. Uh, he's cheeky. You know, there was an actually no. There was another story that was funnier and less violent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've forgotten it now. No, that's all right. Edit point. Um, what is the? How did you find? I am just curious, just personally, uh, how you found compiling the the the, the stand up. Um, you know, were you? Because you told me that you do you write a lot in the car on the way to the gig. Yeah, because no, I panic. But no, but that's I, I panic on the way to gigs, and then I start like compiling stuff, um, and like forty percent of it might work. Um, but you've been doing stand up for so long. You're a, a young and good looking man that you actually have like hours of old bits. You could be, you could probably be a do do the greatest hit comedian and probably have a hundred percent success rate given I, the amount of bits you have. Yeah, but there's that niggling feeling that I know I a lot of the audience, a lot of the audience here might have seen you before. But I admire you for doing that. Not everyone. Yeah, you know, know, like that's what Seinfeld does. He sort of like compiles the best of the last thirty years of his life. Um, but I don't know. Um, no, you kind of feel like because uh, I I was so bad for just doing the same set mm. all the time. Like I love going to comedians who are like Jason Byrne. Never does he never does a set. No, he doesn't. Yeah, he just messes with the audience, and it's always hilarious. But he's Carl always Spain, another yeah. lad who's just really really good at riffing. The f- sharpest, quickest lad we have, mm-hmm. you know. Um, the two of them, Michael Kenny, was just oh my god, an art. Yeah, an art. Well, it was also just them kind of unraveling some weird, deep secrets from some fellas. <laughs> yeah, marriage. yeah. A lot of it is like <laughs> making people confess yeah, things. It is, yeah. <laughs> Audiences love that. They shit. do love yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna bully this man into confessing why he doesn't live with his wife anymore. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it went on for ages. <laughs> Too long. <laughs> Too long. <laughs> um. But let's not talk shop. Okay, let's not talk. I shop. honestly find talking about my own comedy so boring. Mm, you should, shouldn't. You're very good. Do you talk about your? Com- you don't talk about your comedy that much no. on the set on the pod. Not really. You talk about what's going on in the head of Tony, the crazy mind, the, the twisted mind the twisted of Todd Phillips. Mind. Um, <laughs> no. What are you? Um, what are you enjoying at the moment? What's the thing that at the moment you look up on YouTube the most? Oh wow! I mean, it's quite boring, kind of film analysis, analysis yeah. a lot. Um, then I like I like cleaning videos. I like there's a guy who just silently will buy a Game Boy for I fifty cent, yeah. and he'll just silently take it out and clean and every it's component. Kind of sped up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then and I'll watch it at double speed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then he's got a working Game Boy. I love that mm. for some reason. Yeah. Ant videos. I don't mean like your crazy anti videos. Mm. I mean, like, uh, there's a guy who has like ant farms, yeah, and um, sometimes like they'll fight yeah. or devour a piece of pizza or something like that. That's unreal. Yeah, so quite calming videos, I suppose. That's quite calming. I like mm. that. I do like the good. I like a good film analysis one. Yeah. I also feel like I don't even know what my own opinion is on anything at the moment because I absorb so, so much um, of other people's yeah. opinions on movies. If I was to do a film analysis video, it would be about. How I think Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is Tarantino absolutely rinsing our generation. Yeah. Yeah. You told me about this. What's your what's your So my theory if you look at all the if you look at the Manson family Mm -hmm. in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, they're all played by sons and daughters of Gen X actors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're like Demi Moore oh and directors like Demi Moore's uh, daughter. Rumor Willis. Um Rumor Willis. Kevin Smith's daughter Kevin it? Smith's daughter Kevin Smith um, all these Ethan Hawke's mm, and uh, Uma Thurman's daughter all these amazing actors from the 90s now they've got kids and mm. he's for some reason picked all of their kids to be like the Manson family the yeah. worst worst bunch of hippies I've ever fucking come across <laughs> yeah. and the king of the hippies is uh, Lena Dunham mm. uh, so they're all millennials and she's the queen of the millennials you know of the idea of what gen x and boomers would see as annoying millennials you know uh, so they're the villains mm-hmm. millennials and the hero of the story is brad pitt who 
is the coolest fucker you've ever seen in mm. any film. Yeah. And he literally killed his yeah, wife. Yeah, he's a wife killing stuntman. He's man. a wife killing lunatic. Yeah. And even in the book, it goes into way, like, way worse shit he did. Yeah. The man's a fucking monster. Mm -hmm. But you watch it and you're like, this is the coolest shit. And at the end of the film, like, he's smashing <laughs> young people's faces yeah. against a brick wall. And you're like, this is great stuff altogether. Yeah. I think he's, and there's a scene where, like, Brad Pitt is walking back from the big house on the hill mm -hmm. and it's just millennials just shouting abuse. I feel like that's Twitter shouting at these old actors who are getting cancelled for like a Playboy interview they did in 1970. Mm -hmm. um, but he literally killed his wife. Yeah, he literally <laughs> kills his wife. And you're still cheering for him. Mm -hmm. I think that's Tarantino saying like, we're all a bunch of whinging assholes. Yeah. And yeah, we might have killed a woman back in the day, but we jumped <laughs> across bridges in cars. We did cool shit. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, if I ever meet him, I'm going to ask him that. I think I, I that sounds so uh, watertight <laughs> that, like I, I'd say that's definitely something that, he, like, it's. but I'd say it's not him being like, this is the way it should be. Just kind of like, he's just like, just putting it out there. Just, yeah, just putting you know. Well, I mean, I've I've heard in interviews like people saying like Tarantino, how are you not cancelled? And he's like, by who? And he's like, you know they. And he's like, who the fuck are they? Mm. Like this Tarantino and South Park have kind of always been kind of offensive. Mm -hmm. So they nobody touches them. Mm -hmm. People get cancelled for way way less than the stuff they say in their art. Um, but they also just choose like. Tarantino, of course, chooses his interviews very carefully and he chooses his conversations and what he was just like, I'm shutting your ass down. I'm shutting your ass down. I'm shutting your ass down. <laughs> you know, <laughs> South Park lads don't do any interviews. It's yeah. kind of like they don't have to. You just have to take everything from the product. Yeah. You know, it's like end. a friend, like everyone. Like you're a nice guy. Yes. I know you socially. Um, if we went out with a bunch of friends and you were acting like a bit of an asshole mm. everyone would be like what the fuck is up with Tony tonight Big like, Tony time. was yeah. a fucking wanker tonight mm -hmm. whereas like everyone has at least one friend who's kind of loved but kind of an asshole yeah. consistently yeah. and people would go oh it's just Raymond yeah let him that's just Raymond man what the fuck do you expect I used to hunger for that so much as a, that's as a what kid. you get when you buy Raymond <laughs> yeah. don't buy Raymond if you don't like Raymond you're somewhere in the middle I'm a half asshole. <laughs> yeah, you're a half <laughs> asshole. No, but he's kind of like, oh, that's an acceptable amount of asshole from Kevin. Yeah, that, you oh, know? I'll take that. I'll take that. Yeah, because you wear it all out there. Let it all hang out. I wear my asshole in my sleeve. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's a stinky, stinky sleeve. Uh, that is good. That's a good theory. And um, That's my theory. That's why you should do a podcast. Yeah, but then I, <laughs> what do I do for episode two? <laughs> and I've just blown it away on no! this. <laughs> Um, well, Kevin, we're almost out of time. Oh, shit. Um, I did plug your dates at the top of the podcast in a pre-recorded intro. such a intro. good boy. I'm a good boy. Such a good boy. Um, but Whelan's, of course, for the most people from Dublin will be... Um, if you listen to this... Most people in Dublin are listening to this. If you listen to this podcast, when it drops, mm -hmm. then I'll be in Whelan's tomorrow night. Wow. And if you're if you're a slacker, listening to it a week later, you've missed it. I might put this out, though. Tom I'm not sure. I might put this out tomorrow. Okay. Well, the date is the 7th of September. The 7th of September. <laughs> Kevin, what are you going to do with the rest of your day? Um, I am going to buy some sandpaper because uh, it's my fifth anniversary from mm. with my darling wife, Siobhan. Very and I found a piece of bog oak and I've cut uh, a square rectangle out of it, put a hole in it. I'm going to write, do some om, ogham ah. lettering on it. Uh, and I'm going to give it to her as a necklace. So I need some sandpaper to sand that baby down. That's stunning. And when you give it to her, Wednesday. So, like, it'll if she listens to this podcast, it'll she'll have already got it, or else I would have failed at making it. Okay. And she'll be hugely disappointed. <laughs> you're so sweet. Hey, I try. And you're funny and you're a good guy, Kevin McGarren, Everyone, touching your leg. Thank you. Mm.